Hi, and welcome back to the Falcon Restoration Project of mine. Today, we're tearing out the interior, getting what's left of this carpeting out of here, assessing what it's going to take to get this floor fixed. So, pop the back seat out already. You've seen that before. We're going to go ahead and get the front seat undone here, and we're going to move on with getting some of the trim pieces off and getting this carpet out of here. So this front seat is actually held in by four nuts. They're studs that go through the floor and they're on the, underneath the vehicle. So I've got it up on jack stands a little bit to give me a little height so I can get under here. We're going to go ahead and get this unbolted and get it slid out. Seat's unbolted. We do have a little bit of a snag with the seat belts. I'm not 100% sure how to deal with that yet, but we're going to figure it out. So. Bear with me. Obviously, they're going in through the floor here. They're going through the seat here. There's not enough room between these two pieces here to get this belt out. I don't see how this seat folds the collapse. So, I gotta figure out how to get these out. And instead of these being standard bolts, we got some crazy class system here that you got to open up. So let me see if I can't get this to open up and get this thing out of here. Let's figure it out. There's this little plastic pin that holds these two plates together, keep them from rattling. And once you get that pin out, you can get these jaws to separate. Like that. Apologize for the camera work. I'm trying to hold the camera and work with one hand. Not my best forte. But anyhow, so those are off. We'll keep these plastic pins, make sure we don't lose them so that we can use them again later. Alright, let's get this seat out of here. Special washers here holding this to the floor. And they had some springs that clip on the floor and the seat track to help you move the seat forward. So, pretty cool stuff there. I set all the hardware aside so we don't lose it. And then we're going to see what it's going to take to make this floor decent enough. Here's the previous owner. I've gotten some linoleum or rubber matting or something here. Cut it to cover up this floor issue. Alright. Let me get this cleaned up and show you what we got. Okay, so this is what we got after cleaning this mess up in here. For the most part, the floor is pretty solid. This panel here, obviously, had a lot of weight reduction done. And same thing on this side. It's really thin here, but this is still pretty solid. There's some surface rust pretty much everywhere, but it's just surface rust, and we're going to get that cleaned up, and we're going to treat it. Um, same thing with the back here. There's some surface rust here. This is not through anywhere. In fact, you can still see bare metal right here. So, again, we're just going to clean this up and treat it and keep that good. And we're going to have to figure out what we want to do with these two panels. The right way would be to cut this out, 
fit a new panel in, make sure that we have these creases in there for it make it strong. But I'm not sure if I'm going to do it that way. I have another idea that I'm going to try. So there's obviously some stuff the previous owner's done, like there's a hole put here as well as one on this side of the tunnel. Don't know why they did that. Working on these floors. Um, they're pretty well rusted out in a couple areas. And the right way to do this would be to just cut this out, put in a new floor pan, either glue it or weld it into place. But um, I'm finding those floor pans to be pretty expensive. So I'm doing this a little different. I've already started on this side, over here, the pasture side. And I'm going to show you where we're at with that in a minute. But what we're going to do is we're taking our handy angle grinder here. We've got wire wheel on the end. And we're going to knock down all the loose particles, the heavy stuff, and just try to get this down a little closer to some metal, bare metal if possible. After that, we're going to treat it with this stuff. This is basically like an acid wash, and what it's going to do is it's going to etch the metal so that we have a really good surface for things to stick to, like the paint and sealer. After we do that, we're going to rinse it off, and we're going to top it off with some of this stuff. This is POR15. This is an encapsulator. And what it does is it completely encapsulates all the rust, prevents it from growing and spreading, and it dries rock hard, almost replacing the metal um, that was there. And we're going to end up putting down two coats of this. But the first coat we'll go down with. After that, we're going to take some fiberglass and we're going to patch the holes with fiberglass and fiberglass resin make it a nice solid repair. After that we'll put our second coat of the capsulator on there. And that should take care of the floor. It will be sealed up, it will be solid, and it won't rust anymore. At least that's what they're claiming. So that's the process. Now I am wearing gloves today because, well, I'm dealing with acid. I'm also dealing with this stuff here which doesn't clean up real easy. You really don't want it on your skin because it's going to be there for a while. The other thing that I have, um, well I left them on the hood, I gotta go grab them. Uh, some safety glasses because when we start running this thing around, it's going to be flinging all kinds of rust and possibly these little wire shards and stuff like that. We don't want it in our eyes. So, let's go ahead and I'll grab my safety glasses. Safety first. Um, maybe I'll get you repositioned a little bit so you can see better what it is I'm doing and we'll continue on. As described before, we got some rust here and we got some good sized holes. This is the worst of it uh, as far as the front goes. The other side has got some holes as well, but like I said, we're going to go ahead and get those patched up. Um, in the interim, we're just going to get some of this loose stuff off, get it out of the way rubber plug. I'm just going to go ahead and pop that out of there. And I'm going to go to work. Now, we're not going to go crazy with this wire wheel. Again, we're just trying to get stuff not loose and uh, get down to where we got something that we can uh, work with better. So, let's give this a go.
that's pretty much all I wanted to do with the wire wheel is get this to where it's not too bad. I'm going to take this just kind of brush some of the stuff out of the way. Go ahead and hit it with the acid. I did go ahead and put some stuff under the car, under these holes in the floor, because this stuff's going to drip through, and once the stuff gets on the floor and it hardens, it ain't coming off, and we don't want that. So, point of interest, maybe I don't know. So, just going to go ahead and get this up in here. Now this is going to sit for a few minutes. Um, to let it do its job. I'm just going to give it a nice coating here. And yeah, you can smell it. It's got a pretty good acid odor to it going on here. Um, while that's going on, I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and take this kick panel off because I'm going to want to tuck the fiberglass up the wall and I want that kick panel out of the way. So, while this stuff is doing its acid etching, I'm going to go ahead and get that pulled off of there. I'm starting to turn white stuff here and there. Um, it's time to get that rinsed off because you don't want to leave it there. It'll continue to eat the metal as long as the acid's still active. Um, I got the kick panel off and the trim panels and stuff. Um, they need to come off either way because uh, they got to come off carpet in. So uh, we're going to go ahead and rinse off all this acid, get it cleaned up, and uh, let let it dry up, put the encapsulator on. But while it's drying, we're going to go over to the other side of the car and start doing some fiberglass. So let's go ahead and get it rinsed off here really good. Now I'm just using warm water uh, over cold water because I find it works better when it comes to getting this stuff to break down and getting it out of here. Um, it just seems to do a better job. Plus it dries faster. And again, I do have some stuff under the car so that all this crap isn't getting on my floor. You may hear a noise in the background now you didn't hear before. I got a fan going. And uh, the reason for that is, well, it's 9.30 in the morning. It's already over 85 degrees and high humidity. So I'm sweating like there's no tomorrow. I got a fan going to kind of help deal with that. I'm dripping all over everything. And it's also going to help things dry a little faster. And of course, it's keeping the fumes off of me, which that acid does have some fumes to it. So, that's about as good as I'm going to get it. Paper towel. I got some rust down there. Dry that up a little bit. Alright. Up and uh, I cut out some pieces of fiberglass that I'm going to use to cover up this rust, patch the holes. I'm going to mix up some resin right now. Some hardener. 
I'm going to take a really cheap brush here because once this stuff hardens, this brush is going to be garbage. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this hardener and resin together. don't want to use cardboard or anything like that when you're mixing um, Bondo or resin or anything like that with a hardener because a certain amount of it will get sucked into the cardboard even if it's got a coating on it and it won't work out as well as you'd like. It works but not as good. So I believe I've got this mixed up right. Again, I'm not an expert at any of this. We're going to put a coating down here. Um, because I'm going to try to put a whole sheet down on this. Looks like I should have mixed up some more resin. Okay, we got more. And the other thing is, you can also use POR 15 because it's going to be rock hard and kind of acts a lot like a resin once it dries. So that will also help harden this stuff up. Got a layer down here. And you only got so much time to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and get our piece of fiberglass. Work it into place here. Cover all this. As you can tell, I'm wearing gloves for a reason. All right. Let's go ahead and mix up some more of this stuff. Start on the edges, work this stuff in here. You want it to saturate the fiberglass. And unfortunately, this fiberglass is really, I mean, fiberglass in general is stringy, but I guess this does a little more than I'm used to, of course. I'm going to be honest, I haven't worked with fiberglass in 30 years, so, yeah, what? And that was a completely different application. So. Definitely going to have to mix up some more resin. Okay, so, I got the fiberglass down and covering up all the holes. We're going to go ahead and uh, put a coat of that POR 15 over the top of it and we're also going to go ahead and paint the other side and get that all encapsulated and sealed up. So that's the next step right now. I'll go ahead and let you see it after we get it all painted up. The glass has been done. There's no more holes in there. I've got some more of that POR 15 on there. Give it another coating make it a little harder and stronger. Uh, the other side over here we've got that coated up um, so it's ready uh, for the fiberglass once it dries. Um, I went ahead and coated over some of the other areas of the floor that had some rust on it um, just so that they don't continue to rust. But uh, So that's where we are now. So um, First test, just tapping on it. It feels really good. We're going to let all this stuff harden up and we'll show you the end results here. Uh, again, this is all going to get covered up with carpet. So, yeah, this is a, the driver's side floor pan. Um, that big rust hole there, that's been fixed. And the same thing over here on the passenger side. We got that hole fixed, nice and solid. Um, Everything's coated up with that uh, stuff to stop it from rusting some more. 
uh, got trim panels and pieces out of here because right now what we're going to do is try to get the carpet installed. Okay, so this is the, the starting process of putting this carpet in. There is a hole in the carpet right here where the accelerated pedal comes through. And then from there, I had to install this grommet on the uh, high beam switch. Um, there's obviously there's the back half of the carpeting here. Um, nothing goes under the back seat, and nothing actually goes under the front seat. But it does have these little wings here, so when the front seat mounts, you don't see the floor; you just see the carpet. Uh, I will have to poke some holes in the stuff here to get the seat mounted back up. This little tab here, and that little tab there, actually there's a spring that goes from this to the bottom of the seat and that helps you slide the seat forward. You can see I've got some panels up along the side. This carpeting came in six pieces so those panels gotta get tucked in along the side. I gotta trim them down and put all the uh, side trim pieces in for the a pillar and B pillar um, and get the floor sills put back on but that's where we're going right now I think it looks uh, pretty good um, it does have this jute backing stuff on it so it's insulated and helps keep down the noise and the heat and cold and all that kind of stuff so yeah I think it's looking pretty good I'll show you when we get uh, closer to the end Okay, so here's the carpet install complete. You can see we got the uh, kick panel in, got the sill plates on, got the B pillar panel in, put the back seat in just to get a feel for what it was going to look like. We'll go ahead and give you a view from the other side. Okay, so here's from the other side. If you can tell there, let's see if I can zoom in on it. Uh, I can't really see it from this angle, it's moving a little bit. but. Um, Anyhow, they gave me a grommet for the high low beam there, so that got installed. Obviously, you got the kick panels installed, side pieces installed over there, got the panels put back in and clean them all up. So now we just gotta figure out what we're gonna do with repolstering the seat and get that taken care of. But for the first time ever for me, I've got carpet in the front of this thing, and I think it turned out pretty good. So, yeah, next step, we're going to go ahead and see what we can do about fixing the back seat, or the front seat. Alright, so, this is the front seat. As you can tell, like I suspected before, had some sort of a fire issue inside this vehicle that kind of destroyed that. So, my plan right now is to get some material and get some foam and basically redo the front seat myself. Well, we got the interior going. We got the floors fixed. It did take three layers of fiberglass to fix the driver's side because it was a pretty large hole and to make it strong enough, it's gonna take that much. But we got that taken care of. Obviously, got everything prepped and sealed and hopefully that will stop the rust. I also coated the underneath uh, where it was rusted through uh, to prevent that from expanding and continuing. So that's all done. We got the carpet installed, got all the trim pieces cleaned up and put back in as far as the kick panels, the B pillar covers, and the rocker cover sill plates. So that's all done. I put the back seat in just so, you know, you see what it looks like with the seat in. Uh, probably end up pulling it back out when I put the front seat back in. I don't know yet. Um, the front seat actually bolts in from underneath, so it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, the only thing I still got to do uh, from the inside is I'm going to have to make the holes for the seat as well as for the seat belts. I got to get those holes in there and get those mounts put back in. But next video, I intend to take this front seat part and see if we can't reupholster 
at least the bottom section, if not the whole thing. I'm not sure yet. See how close I can match some materials and uh, get some new foam in there and make it comfortable and get rid of that ugly burn um, and make that look decent again. So that's the plan for the next video. But for this video, I'm all done. So it's been pretty warm here in Georgia and just haven't had the opportunity to come out here and work because the heat's just preventing it. But I got some done. So hopefully you'll stick around for the next video and you got something out of this one. But we're moving forward. Enjoy your projects. I'm enjoying mine. Have a great day.